Okay, so now we're going to uh, start here with the tonsillitis. Um, first, when we we'll discuss tonsillitis, we're going to look at all the. Uh, we're going to go over the different classifications. Uh, the first one, which is the most minor, is the um, acute uh, catarrhal. Now, the acute catarrhal is pretty much, uh, for all intents and purposes, viral, and it's going to be associated with. Um, some type of acute pharyngitis um, and it's, it's going to be the most mild one if you take a look here at a quick picture um, you have some uh, you have some swelling um, of the tonsil right here and it's also going to be associated with redness of the pharynx uh, as well because it's, it's going to be part of a you know overall uh, pharyngitis just kind of also affects the tonsil neighboring to it. Um, the other type is going to be um, the follicular. Now, in the follicular, uh, this is going to be you know some type of bacterial etiology. Um, what you have is you have these little white spots. Now, to understand where these spots come from, uh, it's nice to kind of look at the anatomy of the uh, palatine tonsils. Uh, in, in the anatomy, you can see that you have these primary crypts, which extend this way, and then you have your secondary crypts, which uh, come off of it. And so what's happening is uh, pus is, you know, it's infecting this area here in between, and the pus is coming out. So you're seeing one here, uh, you know, one there, and, and at each uh, location of the um, primary crypt. And so this is going to be your acute follicular um, type of tonsillitis. Uh, the next one uh, that you can have is going to be the acute membranous. Sorry, this is three. Uh, acute membranous. Now, acute membranous is pretty much the same thing as uh, follicular. It's just kind of like a continuation. Um, you, what you can see is there's, there's a there's a smooth white type of covering to the entire. Uh, tonsil and the, the reason this develops is because as this follicular uh, continues, the follicular tonsillitis continues to secrete purulent discharge, it tends to cover up the entire surface of the um, tonsil, and that's what you're seeing here. The final type is going to be the exudative uh, type, it's, uh, it's called the acute parenchy. Uh, Parenchymatous. Sorry, it's not exudative. It's uh, parenchymatous. Uh, the other two were exudative. The uh, follicular and membranous were both exudative. Uh, in the parenchymatous, uh, what you'll notice is there's going to be well, the area that's affected is this area right here, the parenchymal area, and so this tends to enlarge the um, tonsils heavily. And the way you can tell is it goes across, you know, up to the midline. Now, the very important feature here is the uvula is still central. Now, if uvula is central, it's going to be, you know, uh, some type of tonsillitis. But if it's shifted to the right or to the left, that makes um, peritonsillar abscess more likely. Um, now, let's just kind of go over who is infected. Um, this is more common uh, with, with school-aged children. Um, but this doesn't mean that um, adults don't get it. It's also seen in adults. So um, you can't completely rule it out. You know, if, if you see an adult, you can't say, oh, it can't be uh, tonsillitis. Now, um, what, are the, what are the symptoms that patients will feel? Um, you know, the, the biggest thing that should point you towards tonsillitis is the fact that they have a sore throat. Um, which, of course, this could be many things, but they have odontophagia as well, where they're having, you know, painful whenever they swallow uh, anything. Um, and then on top of that, they have fever uh, with chills and rigor. And so um, this kind of should point you towards that. And, of course, with fever, you have constitutional symptoms, uh, which, like, you know, malaise, tiredness, um, and all those things. Now, there also are some associated uh, symptoms, not all the time, but sometimes, uh, one is the earache, which can either be referred uh, pain or it can be due to an acute octitis media, which is a complication. Um, and finally, another one that can be associated, a symptom, 
is the is abdominal pain. Now, the source of the abdominal pain is actually a uh, lymphadenitis uh, in the mesentery. So it's going to be a mesenteric lymphadenitis, and this is can be very similar to um, an appendicitis type of uh, location and uh, feeling. The other thing is, now, upon examination, what will you find? Well, when we look at um, all the different, you know, ones that we showed here, the follicular, the membranous parenchymatis, uh, one of the first things that you're going to notice is redness. Um, you have redness, uh, of course, of the tonsil, but also associated with the uh, soft palate. So if you look here, you know, the soft palate here is um, red, and even, well, this uvula is kind of uh, still good, but you can even see the uvula here is also red, and, and uh, here the uvula is red. So you have uvula, uh, redness of the pillars, the soft palate, and the uvula. And again, the uvula is midline. The other thing is going to be, you do tend to get halitosis uh, as well. And there's going to be um, enlargement of the jugular uh, digastric lymph nodes. So that's uh, a very prominent feature. Uh, and these together, you know, you can be pretty sure it's uh, tonsillitis. Of course, you can do uh, you know, you can take a scraping and do culture sensitivity. The most common is, you know, strep, staph, and uh, haemophilus uh, as far as the carrier, uh, the organisms that cause it. Now, as far as chronic goes, uh, so that's kind of the acute there. Let's talk about chronic. Uh, in chronic tonsillitis, we, we have more of the same. You know, obviously, you're not going to have the, uh, you know, the cat's rub because that's just a viral infection of acute pharyngitis. Uh, but you do have... Uh, chronic follicular uh, you have uh, chronic membranous but we have an extra one which is called uh, chronic fibroid now in chronic fibroid uh, this is going to be a little different because instead of it actually being enlarged uh, it actually becomes smaller so it becomes fibrotic but it's still infected so you can't say, oh, you know, it's not large, it's not infected. So this is a, uh, you know, something to keep in mind. Now, with, with regards to symptoms, uh, the symptoms are the same as acute. You have the adenophagia, the painful swallowing, um, the redness, the halitosis, the jugular digastric lymph nodes. They're tender, especially if there's acute attack, but it's a recurrent. So it's just a recurrent, you know, acute attacks. Of uh, tonsillitis. Now, let's talk about uh, some complications. So now let's focus on the complications that can develop from tonsillitis. Um, first, we can have more of a systemic complication. Uh, this is going to be uh, rheumatic fever, glomerular nephritis, and you can also have bacterial endocarditis. So these are the kind of systemic. Uh, symptoms. Uh, then we have more of the local uh, symptoms. This can be acute otitis media. It can just spread up the institution tube and affect uh, the middle ear. And finally, we have different types of uh, abscesses. Uh, various abscesses, you know, they just kind of go through locally. Uh, first, you can develop an intratonsillar abscess, which would be within the tonsil. Uh, this can then, you know, uh, creep out and go become a peritonsillar abscess. This is known as uh, Quincy. The main feature of Quincy is going to be that uvula shifting. And then you can have, you know, it can even go further into peripharyngeal uh, abscess. Um, so those are different types. And of course, these will be treated with cigit and drainage. Uh, and finally, um, you can get a tonsillar lift. And this is just basically some sort of stone, like you know, calcium or magnesium that develops uh, within the tonsil. Now, uh, finally, we can you know move on to treatments. So, how is this treated? Um, you first you want to treat it uh, conservatively, especially if it's just one case, just an acute case. Um, you know, we can just give some rest, uh, encourage uh, fluid intake. For pain, you can give some analgesic, uh, such as aspirin is a good choice. 
And of course, we want to fight the infection. So give an antibiotic such as uh, penicillin or you can also give erythromycin as well. Now, if there are certain indications uh, to do surgery. And so, you know, the surgery is called tonsillectomy. Um, and so there are, there are two types of indications. Uh, there is the absolute indication where, you know, there's no choice you have to do tonsillectomy. And then there's a relative indication where it's up to the doctor, depending on the uh, situation uh, involved. In absolute, it's going to be um, hypertrophy of the tonsils. Now, if the hypertrophy uh, leads to, you know, problem with breathing, uh, talking, or swallowing, then it's going to be um, necessary to just take it out uh, through tonsillectomy. Uh, if it's recurrent tonsillitis, the numbers given is if you have uh, three in three years or five in two years. Um, if you have an abscess, and if you you know think there's a malignancy involved, then you have to go ahead and pull it out through uh, tonsillectomy. Relative, you know, if it's strep or diphtheria, you're trying to avoid you know them getting uh, rheumatic fever or gonorrheitis. Uh, if it's chronic tonsillitis, you know the halitosis and constant sore throat, you know, can get difficult to live with. So. Uh, you know, you can remove that, or if it's part of a another surgery, for example, if it's you know if they're getting some uh, something removed in the throat for obstructive sleep apnea, then you can just go ahead and remove the tonsils as well um, to prevent that. Now there is um, some complications associated uh, with the surgery, and um, this you know the first thing is going to be bleeding afterwards. Uh, this can be a primary bleed, which is due to the sutures or the cautery. It can be secondary bleed to some type of infection. This usually happens, uh, you know, a week to ten days later, or it can be um, a reactionary bleed, just as the, you know, due to the BP rising. And this is usually going to be within uh, 24 hours. That's how you tell the two apart. Um, the other effect, you know, that's the first one. Second thing, you can have aspiration. Uh, you know, the aspiration, you know, as, as the doctor was uh, working, you know, he, some of the fluid or the infection went into the lung, causing, an, you know, lung infection. Uh, so this can be the lungs. Uh, and then you have local injury. Uh, which is going to be TMJ, the temporary medical joint dislocation. Or the Eustachian tube damage. And finally, or I cannot find it, but you can have fibrosis of the tissue which was cut. And finally, you can have remnants. Uh, some remnants were not removed, and they can continue to hypertrophy.